Uh, but I saw him one per team for like 15 games straight. So I saw 30 Dariuses. And uh, on Dominion, he's really overpowered. But uh, I don't think it would translate well to Summoner's Rift, honestly. When you have five-man team fights and he just he just gets snared, and I just see him getting destroyed. He doesn't have any anything to like avoid snares. He doesn't have a gap closer. He doesn't have... Uh, tenacity built into his kit or anything like Aurelia so I just don't know how you would play him effectively against good people I could totally see him destroying like destroying terrible people just absolutely massacring them yeah he does too blind pick Darius is overpowered as hell right now yeah because he just walks up top lane and you don't know who you're facing and you and most people are not coordinated enough to toss a like an ash or whatever your ad carry happens to be up there to kite him and then they just get destroyed and he snowballs and wrecks everybody's face let me let me say though uh apprehend is a decent gap closer though um i will say that that if he's able to get in uh, decently close uh and then once he's in he's putting uh stacks uh his his uh uh, his passive is 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 just deadly. Um, I actually was was spectating a game where I know Ponophobia was playing with a couple friends, and uh, it ended with uh, Darius with a Penta kill, just absolutely wrecking everybody late game. And uh, he, if he gets survivability, he's really nasty. Uh, he's perfect for top lane, but he, if he has survivability, at least to get through the early to mid game. His late game is sick. Uh, I, I, I truly believe that he just he just needs some items uh, and needs you know uh, there's a team comp issue I believe with him where uh, you're gonna need you're gonna need some decent decent assist for him. But if he's able to if he's allowed to get into the fight and be tanky, uh, he he will he will wreck. Uh, his his decimate actually has some decent range and. You know the the idea being that if you can measure it correctly, if it's actually hitting on the axe blade, he does you know more damage. Uh, it's my impressions are he's really 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 sick, uh, and he might need a little bit of a nerf on the damage. I agree with you; he doesn't have an escape, but most of the time that I've been seeing, he hasn't really needed one. Uh, his, and apprehend is just enough of a gap closer to let them get in and put a couple stacks on you. And it's just, it's funny how his bleed effect just takes that much longer. And I, and I think I made the comment when I, when I went against him one time was it seemed to last twice as long as Ignite. So just, just my impressions are he's, he's got a lot of damage and a lot of potential. And if he is able to get to late game, he is definitely uh, somebody, somebody that's a real issue to deal with towards the end. You don't feel like he's good early and mid game. I think he's decent, um, and I don't think there's anything wrong with him. I just think that his late game is is what's really standing out right now. Um, I don't I don't think his early is 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 so dominant that it can't be you know matched by you know different things in lane. But I think once he gets certain items, it just looks it's it's it makes me shake my head yeah. a little bit. I I just. Just don't know, don't know how you deal with it at, at the late game if he's allowed to get in. I guess you see more of that in Dominion. So what makes him so overpowered in Dominion? Is it that all? Mostly lack of coordination, honestly. No. It's the same thing that makes him overpowered in pub games where nobody's coordinated. Um, I don't necessarily think that he's... I'm not saying he's bad either. I, I think that right now he's pretty good. I Honestly, the only thing that I would change about him, if, I, if it was my choice, would I would... Um, remove his innately tankiness um, without having to buy items for it because he pretty much can just stack offensive items and he does too much damage while being too hard to kill without having any defensive items. So he's uh, he has like assassin style damage but bruiser style defensive stats, I guess. Doesn't really seem like it, it's fair. Um, you know, he kind of reminds me of Olaf only he's harder to kill basically. In that he yeah. just comes in and just murders your whole team. That's a good point, and and not only that, but his, his alt is is you can't be within range of him if he's if you've been fighting him. Uh, for his alt will will absolutely destroy you from a third life down. 
Um, yeah. And it's, it's it's one of those things where I feel like if if they take Flash on him, you can't be within Flash range of Darius if you've been fighting for a little bit, and he gets you below half health because he will find a way to finish you. It seems like it just it just feels like uh, if he gets if he has any kind of range to 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 close a, a gap to to finish you off, he will. It's 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 a really really nasty alt that much damage it puts down. I don't. I don't. I, we've kind of we kind of touched on it, but his hemorrhage passive to me seems really powerful because I can go against like a Warwick, and the couple times I played him, it's always been against Warwick, and it's always been in the top lane. And I can pretty much kill a Warwick between like level one and six, and even after that, uh, you know, assuming I build correctly, get a little magic resist, I have never had a problem trading with a Warwick, even though he's getting the life back, and it's all because of how much damage I'm doing and that hemorrhage passive just ticking every time I every time I attack, it adds a stack up to what five stacks, and then that five stacks at level eighteen, it's doing like three hundred damage ticks. It's insane, and you know, you scale that throughout the entire game, and I'm I'm taking out a Warwick who's naturally. You know who's getting all his life back in the top lane by just attacking, and now he can't re um, recover. It's just stuff, stuff like that in the top lane. You have to put him against somebody that's ranged and somebody to stay away from the hemorrhage and stay away from the, you know, inevitable chunking down until you're in range of the alt. Yeah, he he's the thing is every single thing that he does is not overpowered by itself, but it's the combination of like you said the you have the hemorrhage. I think it's what is it, thirty six points per like flat damage, and then something like 0.5 per attack damage on top of that. So and that and that goes over the 5 second period. The but that would be fine as a passive, but they add more to it. Like as he hits you, he starts movement speed increasing also, so you can't run away from him. And uh you know, that I think that's too much, honestly. It's it's the combination of all these things and the fact that his base re resistance stats are high and they scale high and and quickly. And he's got the speed boost, and he's got the extra damage on the alt from the passive, and he's got the regular damage just from the passive, and it just keeps going on and on. Um, which is what they do now. They just every every champion that comes out, they try to make more and more multi-layered so people will purchase them. And uh, it, you know, it, you have to. I guess you have to just cool it with a lot of these things and make them a little bit less effective if he's going to have so many things going on at the same time. I'm with you though on the. I feel like his base his base health is is where the nerf will come. Um, his his ability right his abilities together really make a nasty combination of, of tools that he has. But if he doesn't have to build, you know, tank items to 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 really have some good survivability and just and just be naturally tanky as he is, I'm with you. I I feel like uh you know putting Putting his base health down a little bit would would probably be in order at least coming up soon. That would that would be my my expectations of what they'll find and need to change. He doesn't he doesn't have scaling MR right? So for that, what we know. I, I do not know the answer to that. I did, honestly didn't look into that before this. I was hoping. To Scal what do you mean scaling MR? He needs one point one point two five per level. Ooh. He starts with thirty, okay. so at level eighteen he's around fifty. Um. And I believe that his health at level 18 without any health items is over 2,000 also. And Somewhere in the neighborhood of like 2,100. <laughs> so you are not lying when you say he's just naturally tanky at level 18. Yep. Uh, I've been building him. I Actually, I'll, I'll start off usually like a phage on him if I can. Or uh, some other, you know, depending on my lane matchup, obviously, maybe a little magic resist. But if I can go right to that phage, have that extra slow, and then he's getting that movement speed. No one's. It's that gap closure that I need, and it's perfect for him. Um, but all my experiences have never... I've never got to play him in a range fives where there's been bands and everything out. I'd like to try it to see what kind of lane combinations he can do, but I'm not really a top lane player to give it a go. So, But I thought it was interesting, if you guys may have checked it on Reddit, it was Ciderhelm had posted something where he was saying this is going against Riot's anti-fun policy, where he's kill-stealing in team fights because his ultimate, you know, if he gets a kill, it refreshes and it's doing true damage, and now he can just get pentakills. I mean, we saw on the first day there was like eight videos on the front page of Reddit of Darius pentakills. Yeah. And I kind of agree with the anti-fun policy. Now, it doesn't really... For me, I'm, I'm having fun. I don't care if I'm getting destroyed by him, but uh, for the number of players and the way that most of this game seems to be casual, it, I can see why a lot of people would be complaining about him. Well, it's a, it, 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 honestly, it feels like a good marketing ploy. It feels like, hey, you know, here's a, here's a character who... Uh, you, you haven't had a pentakill yet? Well, here's a character where if you learn him, you have a very good chance of getting one. And, you know, 
if you have eight of them that already show up, and by the way, you know, I watched a game where you guys had one against you. It's that's sick. Uh, it, he, like I said, it, it's it's a he has he has tools that you know, uh, like a, it's almost like you're combining um, some of Olaf and some of of Garen. That's what it feels like to me. Um, Garen with the alt, with that with the nasty alt that can you know finish low low characters, but then um, you know reset. some of the <laughs> right, right. Like there, obviously there's no reset for it, which obviously if you had a the reset makes it just just really nasty. And then wasn't there a bug that came out initially that you know not only did it reset himself, but it reset everybody's alts or something to that effect? Yeah, if anybody was getting assist on it, and they used their alt, their alts refreshed as well. I mean, you know, come on. There's there's some there's some things there that, that they they uh, definitely forgot or or you know made a little op. And I, I'm so expecting a nerf off of this. It'll be t- just way way too much crying. It feels like. It's funny. Speaking of bugs, there's a couple bugs with the new skins. I'm sure you saw it. Sad sad robot Amumu. His laugh goes through the entire map. He can be in fog of war on the other side, and you can be in your base, and you'll hear him laughing. It's yeah. very annoying. I just pl- I played two games today <laughs> and. Somebody played that skin on the other team in the second game, and they laughed the entire game. I shut the sound <laughs> off about ten minutes in. I couldn't stand it. Oh god! Oh, and another, That'd be the worst. Another good bug I found is with Dark Flame Shivana. The first time she uses her alt, everybody gets like a quarter second lag. So yeah. It, yeah. Oh. So that that one's fun, uh, and I I haven't seen anybody abuse it yet. But the guys that I was in Skype with were talking about trying to abuse it and get you know line it up so everyone gets the lag and they can get the kill from it. That's a that's a common bug with Riot. I don't know. They've had champions in the past with the same problem. The first time they use a, a specific ability, I think Malzahar's Null Zone, and a couple other ones, the same the same thing happened. Everybody lag spiked. And Tyrant Swain bug splatting everybody on first day as well. <laughs> the entire enemy the enemy team gets a bug splat error, and then you can just push down the base. Yeah, it's some fun stuff that I don't know. It I don't know if it's the way they're doing the testing or what it, or what it is with their skins, but. If they do their skins like they do their sales, they just copy and paste everything. So <laughs> I, can, I can expect <laughs> that to happen too. <laughs> well, I don't think those skins hit the testing environment. So the the they Amumu one, awesome. I th- I'm 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 not sure now. Actually, for some reason, I thought they were putting the skins on there. I think I watched somebody playing on there with the the new skins. But at the same time, I really don't get how they could go live with global laughter if anybody had. Tried the emotes, you know. Uh, I think it's time to go buy said but robot Amumu and play with him until he gets nerfed. It, that's worth, <laughs> that's worth 975 RP to me. To me, it is to a lot of assholes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all I can say. <laughs> just for that, I'm, just I'm the guy that. in the bottom lane with Alistar that spam shift one. I I don't mind if you do that when I can see you, but man, that thing is so. It's like he's right on you the whole time too. It's like the laugh <laughs> out as it can go. Like you have centered camera on him. And it's the whole time you can just spam it, and everybody in the game can hear you. The only time I was happy was when he was dead. <laughs> That's the only time you were happy, huh? Yes. Because he lost Is the he... game because it was just so annoying. He couldn't concentrate on CSing because all he did was laughter. Yeah, I'm going to blame it on that for sure. There's... I had to turn the sound off, and then I couldn't play anymore because <laughs> the sound was off. So. I try and avoid skins at all costs because they're perpetually at the bottom half of the NFC East. Oh man, that was been ter- doing boom. Go. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> that the first thing you've said since this call started? I think so, yeah. Yeah, that was a fun. Really bad joke. That was worth I thought it. That was good. Oh well. <laughs> Just like everything else, right? I'll go does, back to my pity it. party. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everything's worth it. Oh, uh, you know, Obscura from uh, Obscurica from GGC wants us to talk about the Taipei Assassins. And their Hecarim carry attack speed Lulu, and just how amazing Asians are. But how many, have you guys watched any of those? Of the what? Garena, Garena, Garena. I don't know how to say it. The matches that have been going on at like eight o'clock in the morning. No, they happen while I'm at work, so I can't watch them. Oh, that's awful. I, I'm trying to find something so you can do at work tomorrow. Because I know how <laughs> sad you are that you have to be on this podcast today, and now you don't have your you don't have your information and a way to pass an hour of uh, work. I, yeah. I, I think we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go find that poem you talked about earlier and make Ran Hurt read it on air. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good idea. It's fun. Ed I mean, I don't need help killing time at work. I'm in IT, so I'm, a, I'm an expert. You know how it goes. 
you're not, you're an expert well, yet. You can't watch streams. Yeah, that's what I'm I can't watch. Um, yeah, I can't watch streams. Although the guy who sits next to me is much more bold. He watches uh, Netflix all day long, so that's pretty fun. But uh, yeah, I actually have a lot of work, so I can't really just watch <laughs> for hours and hours. I get yelled at if I get caught. I I'm always you can't run a stream in the background. Come on, now. I run a stream in the background oh. all the time. You know, I got lots of work to do. You don't. Maybe. You, you do don't that. feel like you got lost though, having the stream in the the lower right hand corner of your monitor. I have two monitors. Who does the lower right hand corner? Oh, well, what's the point of having two monitors if you're not going to use both for productivity? That's exactly right. <laughs> so you use one. You use one to watch a stream, and you use the other to do your work. I mean, that's pretty simple, isn't it? <laughs> I think you. That's pretty. Yeah, I don't know. Solid. I got I got uh, like six people in my row who sit in a place where they could see my monitor, and they're 24 inches, and I have two monitors, so uh, I just don't want people to know that I'm sitting there watching League of Legends at work, so I don't do it. Are you embarrassed but, uh, that you're playing League of Legends? And no, know. it's just I think that they would probably report me, and I'd get fired, and then I wouldn't have money to do things. <laughs> it's important to me. <laughs> I don't really care that much about Asian tournaments, honestly, so it's not worth getting fired from my job over <laughs> I don't know if you would have saw these guys. <laughs> to sum it up, sounds pretty good. <laughs> I mean, I, I, yeah, it's arguable whether it's worth losing my Korean job. Characters, and I said, what the hell is all these Korean characters? And then all the damage was coming up in Korean and everything else, and these symbols and shit. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? But they have Spider-Man and Mumu in China, I heard, so... I mean, that's worth what? seeing. They don't have really? laws in China. So they can just make whatever they want. So they have Spider-Man and Mumu skin. I know. I know they have certain things that they can't show, but I didn't know they had Spider-Man and Mumu skin. No, that's that's. I believe so. Oh, that's I'm the Chinese exclusive. For that now. Yeah, you've been seeing all the foreign stuff. You you they had a sweet sale where you get like Trindamir, the uh, the epic Trindamir skin for like ten RP or something, and all the the Ash skin, and they had all these crazy awesome skins you could get for like ten RP each because they just don't care. Yeah, but when they release the Korean server, like, because they know that Asians will grind forever, like, forever and ever, they will play, like, 20 hours a day, they put basic champions at 9,600 IP, like, Ash. Like, these champions, you had to 9,600 IP to get Ash. So you have to play, like, 80 games <laughs> to, to get up. Ash. Or, or put your money into it. Or yeah, it, or I guess. Or was it just IP? That was just IP. I, you know what? I think the actual prices were cheaper. So they, they were like, you can grind because we know you will, or you can pay lower prices, I guess, which is good too. But they have really good sales over there too. Like, they'll do a sale where they sell you like 10 skins for 5 bucks. The opinions voiced on the Trinity Force podcast are not necessarily <laughs> those of the show. Yes. No, that's pretty accurate. I like that. <laughs> Yeah. What what did I do? Nothing. I'm just kidding. Cause it, right. it, it, your your comments sounded racist. It, it make me laugh, but I just wanted to. They're not. They're not racist. They just. You, that's you, just you the just reality said, of the situation. You, you just said. Well, all right. I'm not gonna go there because it's about to go really bad. Are we gonna so. pretend Asian people won't play video games longer than everyone else? Because I can't do that. Oh, there's yeah. A my long fingers get tired first. after a while. They got their short little fingers, and <laughs> you know. They just Their have eyes are able to dart towards the mini map a lot easier because of that sweet peripheral vision. <laughs> Part of it is that they, uh, if they get to the top levels, they can actually make a lot more money than you can over here. So you can imagine that the dedication is there for that. Yeah, definitely. Do even do even just go to Korea? Wow, that's that's still more money than we'll see over here by far. It's not even close. That's why I told Maybe you guys gotta watch it. You guys should have seen these Koreans. It's like you said, they grind and they grind and they grind. They got better at this game than some of these American players, pro teams that we have. These guys are insane. They are. The, the plays they make and everything. Well, CLG NA took like eighth, right, in the last uh, Korean major tournament. Yeah, so, like that. so that's not, you know, I don't know, that's not a terrible showing, but they, what did they came back and they won, or they got second in the in the major tournament IPL four right after they came back from Korea, so. Uh, you know, if they can't get better than 8th over there and they get 2nd here, what does that say? That says that grinding is all this game matters. <laughs> <laughs> Learning new strategies well, and playing as a team. Well, a lot of people attributed it to all the Koreans living together. All the Korean teams live together. Like, it's They've not had gaming a houses for a long time, whereas we're just starting it. That's the same. 
it's it's not even a question if you're a major Korean team of if you get a gaming house like it is over here. Like CLG is still talking about whether or not they get a gaming house. The Korean teams just they become a team, they get a gaming house. Right. Well, there's also guaranteed money. I mean, the, their their leagues themselves pay money, whereas you know the it almost feels like you know in order for you know, just the major teams in order for them to get together, they have to have a, a backing website and everything else for their sponsors to pull up all the money they need to live on their own on a gaming house around here. You know, I think it, I think it's I think it's different economies as it goes. I mean they've had they've had StarCraft players over in Korea, I know, that, you know, have lived in gaming houses and practice, you know, ten to fourteen hours a day. Yeah. That's that we just we don't have that um at our disposal to, to, to make these gaming houses because there's no you know, dedicated funds out there just to provide for it. They're trying to get it, but you know, there's that always that constant struggle for, you know, video games to get accepted. So we'll see where that goes. Well, with gaming houses, just for the Americans, I, I'm just wondering if it's a different um, culture here and how maybe the kids are raised and everything. Because we've seen how TSM has been together, a bunch of 20 year olds in a house, and it's arg- you can argue that it really hasn't helped them all that much as a team to come closer together. While on the other side, you get the Koreans all together, and I'm assuming that. From what we've seen, not even Koreans, it's just Asians in general, we've seen them get together and now they're you know, dominating CLG who practice every day. Well, TSM lost Rayman after they got the gaming house, but they also won IPL4, which is the biggest tournament they've won ever, right? So right. I guess you can't really say that it didn't work at all. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's a, I, the, you're seeing the inner turmoil and stuff, but it, it doesn't mean that they didn't improve as a team. And it, it has to be easier to schedule with everyone living together. Oh, it's just the personality conflicts that you that you get, but I don't know. I don't know if Koreans have, you know, what kind of personalities people born and raised in Korea have. But I mean, they're people just like anybody else. They can't all love each other. Maybe they can, you know. Well, it's also fake it. it, it <laughs> there's also there's also geography involved, where you know, meeting fellow gamers online. It's it, you know the the chances of you meeting fellow gamers online that are going to be living close to each other at the time. That then can all you know, sac- you know, make up their life and 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 move to wherever they need to go. I mean, look at look at a team like uh, we used to be a picture of a goose. Now is is Legion, I believe. Is that right? A picture of a goose. Is a picture of a goose is now MTW, which is now MTW and A is still together. M- Reflex okay. is now Legion. Okay, that's what it is. Um, MTWNA, which used to be a picture of a goose, I mean, they had two players who were young and still involved in school, and their parents did not, weren't accepting, um, you know, of, of, of doing and going, you know, they qualified for, was it Kiev? I forget yeah, which tournament Kiev. they qualified for. Yeah, it was, it was IEM Kiev, and, you know, they couldn't go because, you know, they, they didn't have family acceptance to go and pursue the gaming career that, you know, they felt like they had built up. So there's a different acceptance points of, of what you're expected to do maybe in Korea as to what you're still expected to do here. And until that changes, which I don't know when and if that's going to be changed or accepted, um, knowing how long it takes to get things changed around here, it seems like, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just a, it's 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 something that you know is still not going to not accepted. I'm not sure how much longer it'll take until it actually is accepted as a as a real profession to be a professional gamer. Yeah, there's definitely a stigma with video games. I mean, I'm I'm 30 years old, so I can't like walk around talking about how I play League of Legends and <laughs> write songs about video games and stuff without <laughs> people giving me like weird looks. Like, oh, uh, shouldn't you have, uh, you know, like, grown up by now? That's the kind of thing that I get from people. Yeah, how's your family so, gatherings? So what'd you do this weekend? I sat down and wrote a League of Legends, League of Legends rap about Urgot. My family doesn't really know what I do in my free time, but uh, they don't live near me, so my family gatherings have, happen once a year. They got more to talk about than me, so. <laughs> so you're, you're the guy in the back with the beer that's kind of like, I'm here because I got drug. Uh, yeah, exactly well, actually, they, they meet at my house. So I don't have to, I don't know, I just, everybody congregates and they ask me about work and stuff, but never, nobody's going to ask me about what I do on the internet. 
Because they, you know, that's a scary question to ask somebody to begin with. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to know your internet history, sir. What have you been up to? Yeah, that's just just what you want to ask somebody. That'll that'll get you a good response, no matter what gathering you're at. That's right. My recent family gatherings have uh, involved me trying to sell Audible to my family members. <laughs> why? Well, because our podcast is sponsored by them. That's why. So sign up and get yourself a damn free book. <laughs> Audible.com. Mm. What is it? AudibleTrial.com forward slash T4. T4 podcast. Go check out for free you got book, it. guys. Yeah. The link is right there on the screen. There. Mm-hmm. All right. I guess, I guess we got <laughs> one, one more topic if something else has to come up here. Uh, we have a Twitter question from a listener, and his name is Tholnos. Tholnos, T-H-U-L-N-O-S. And he asked me, or asked t Force Podcast, I should say, uh, since Riot's main focus for balancing champs is for the pro scene, how do you guys think that's going to affect the newbies, or will it? And I'm going to leave that on the floor, and if you, if you agree with his statement or not. Well, I'll, uh, here we go. I'll, I'll make the perfect example for this. I know, I'll give you two characters that are, you, for the longest time, newbies still thought were overpowered, and it was more because you just didn't know how to play against them, and that's Akali and Singed. And for the longest time, the, they were banned, uh, first banned picks as a matter of fact, if you, if you went into a rank game in the beginning of Season 2 or end of Season 1, you would find that those two champs were going to be automatic bans. And yet, when they were played on top level, uh, you, you rarely saw a good singe that, that, that worked well in a game, and you never saw an Akali work. I still remember to this day when, when watching uh, uh, Ocelot, who, who loves Akali to death, trying to play Akali in, in a pro match, and tried it on three different occasions and got absolutely squashed on all three occasions. Uh, it didn't take much to do it. And, 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 and the point is, is that... Uh, you know, the, the Riot does balance for the pros to a certain extent, but it only affects the newbies who never bother to understand what they need to do. Because honestly, they they just need to learn. You know how a lot of times a, a, a strategy is against a certain champion or certain matchups and how they should work. And when you have such you know involved counterpicking in pro games. Um, and sometimes even in highly low rank games, you know, it, 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 it makes a difference as to what you see. Whereas if you play a blind pick or, you know, have a matchup you maybe have not used to or not seen before. So that's my perfect example of, you know, how you could see, you know, balancing champs for the pro scene affecting the lower scene where, you know, some people are still saying, oh, it's, it's overpowered, it's overpowered, it's overpowered. No, it's not overpowered. It's just the fact that, you know, pros have learned how to deal with it. You may need to learn how to deal with it. And there's a learning curve that seems to happen over time as you watch where, you know, a pro pros will figure out how, you know, certain matchups work. But yet, for, it trickles down the line later on and it takes a while. Yeah, and I think that, you know, if you're going to judge a car, you're not going to, like, put it in the hands of, like, a 16-year-old. You're going to put it in the hands of a pro driver is going to drive it around and tell you how fast it can go and how well it handles you know, hugging the curves and everything else. And it's the same thing. You want to have the best players playing the champs and then balance them according to how they're played and how they're you know, face up against other matchups at the highest level. That just makes the most sense. And, you know, you think about how many times, you know, an early level or, you know, whatever, just low elo, you know, how many times does Zin Zhao, like, actually pub stomp? I mean, it happens, you know, all, you know, quite frequently at low elo, and you'll never see him at a pro level because he's probably one of the worst champions in the game. But nobody knows how to play against him at low elo or just, you know, people that are beginning or, or leveling up. Uh, Zin Zhao just pub stomps. So, you know, those things exist. Akali can still pub stomp, like, mad at low elo because people don't know how to play against her. And uh, so that's kind of what you're looking at. It makes the most sense to balance it, especially with all the emphasis on esports and how Riot is playing a role in that. And they want to make sure that that playing field, in particular with the pros, is as is, is level as possible. Um, and really, you know, the, uh, the low level guys, the, the standard you and me and everyone else, uh, we just got to kind of grin and bear it and, and adjust as, as best possible. But of course, not Bad Administrator, who doesn't ever get hit and always wins his middle lane. 
That's right. Always. You know what, though? When I was in season one, I totally took advantage of um, of Zinn, basically, and how he dominated uh, people who had poor positioning and things like that. And I got to 1600 playing just Zinn and Urgot. Um, and I wasn't even very good back then, honestly. I couldn't play at a 1600 level with any champions that had any kind of like skill involved or skill shots. Um, it's just Urgot and Zinn are very easy to play. And, uh, I, you know, you still, will get, as, as unplayable as Zinn is in any kind of real game with coordinated teams, you will still get people calling him overpowered if you play him in normals by yourself. And uh, he's a pretty good example, honestly, of, of how Riot over nerfs champions to compensate for low elo players not understanding positioning and counterpicking and things like that. So I wouldn't say that Riot only focuses on the pro scene. I think what happens is the nerfs to champions that domi- dominate the low elo and low skill players are delayed because Riot says, all right, we're going to wait at least a while to see if these people can start to understand um, how to play against someone like Zen or Eve or somebody like that. But eventually they give in. And like Eve's nerfed out of the game, basically. Um, although I still believe that she's playable, especially a, a low elo where people don't have map awareness. And then Zen, um, you know, he's, he's he got nerfed way past where he needed to go, honestly. And it's just, all it is is about, it's, a, it's apparent power. And it's the same thing with, uh, what's his face? Uh, Darius uh, Hootie. He, uh, with his ult and his pentakill, the, he gets the pentakills. People see pentakill, all of a sudden they just assume that he did all of the damage in the whole fight. Um, he can kill people 1v1. Um, you know, it's a coordinated effort to beat some, beat a champion who has that much uh, finishing power and things like that. And the problem is they say, well, if you focus him, then the other champions kill you. And I see a lot of arguments that say, well, you can't focus the top lane champ because then the mid lane champ and the bottom lane champ will kill you, right? That applies whenever any team picks three carries. So that doesn't necessarily mean that Darius specifically is overpowered. All it means is you have to change the way you play based on the champions the other team picks. So, you know, maybe you need more CC. Maybe you need five champs that have some sort of stun, you know, which is possible that you can pick that. It's not impossible to pick that. And, uh, you know, he's got... His gap closer is a reverse gap closer. People, you guys said he has a gap closer, and that's fine. Um, but it's not really a gap closer because it closes the gap, the, the, I guess, in a different way. Like you don't, you can't chase down the whole team with with one pull. It's you know what I mean. Like you pull somebody out of position, but in a coordinated fight, say you have a tank in the front, you don't want to pull a Mumu or somebody like that because then you just lose the fight. So I guess w- the point is th- there's there's counters to every champion, but like you said, if it goes long enough. Riot will let it go for a long time, but if it goes long enough, they will eventually nerf a champion for low elo players and, and players in normals if they just let, keep destroying everyone. Let me say this, though. When you, when you see Nautilus in the jungle, um, uh, they give you, for instance, Nautilus has a, a way of just destroying one carry that, that they, he particularly targets. And it's hard to really stop Nautilus from getting to that carry uh, you can do a whole bunch of things to try and stop him from it, but his his pull is a humongous gap closer in that case. Uh, and and I think Darius is almost the same way. If you let Darius actually get to a carry, um, he it, as long as he's in that range to do it, it, it it's there for the taking. Now, mm-hmm. do you you don't want to pull a Mumu? I agree with that, but a lot of times, you know, in a team fight. It's not. It's not when he uses it because there will be a tank that goes in and initiates a team fight. And once it's initiated, unless it's initiated on Darius to begin with, um, he's going to be able to roam and pick where he wants to go after that. And I really believe that that's all that really matters because most of the team fights that you see with him, he still is able to, you know, get in, do a cue to everybody that's in within range, and then go pick out his target of whoever he wants to kill first. And yeah. That's I don't true, know. but you, you just described you just described Darius, but you also described Olaf and you described Poppy and you, you described every champion that does that kind of thing. And Nocturne, they all do that. They ignore the team and, and dive the back line. And they can all do it. Olaf can't be affected by anybody when he alts, he can't be stunned, nothing. Poppy basically is immune to all but the uh, the well, usually the support at that point, right? 
Um, and she can kill more than one person without even being able to be hit by anyone on the team but the support. She can alt Soraka, kill three people before the alt ends. Um, but you don't see people complaining about Poppy being overpowered. And I would say that she has a more annoyingly powerful end game than, than Darius does. Nocturne's the same way. You know, he just he just hits his R and jumps to your carry and just beats the crap out of him. What are you going to do about it, you know? He even has a spell shield if you try to taunt him or something like that. So he's not unique in that way. It's just the perception because people see him last hitting them. They see the last hits, the Darius last hits, and the fact, like you said earlier, that you can't go near him when you're low health. But if you think about it, you can't go near a lot of champions when you're low health. You can't go near Akali when you're low health. You can't go near Katarina when you're low health. These, I'm, I'm naming off assassins, and this was my point earlier, is that he does too much. He does assassin-like damage, but he's not the only one. And, uh, you know, and, and that's the real problem. He, he, he's too hard to kill for how much damage, he, for the assassin-like damage that he does. But his kit, uh, Riot sometimes makes kits that just can't work, um, which is why they remade Kale and they have to remake Eve. Because there's just no way to balance them. But if uh, if you if you consider his kit, I don't think it's inherently bad. I think that you can you could balance it if you wanted to, if you put some effort into it, which they will do, I'm sure. So I I just think he he can be balanced. I don't think that he's broken like people have been saying he's broken. I well I'm not saying he's broken. I my my feeling is is that he his his kit of damage. Plus, his inherent tankiness is just, it, it feels too much. It feels like it is all too much um, in combination together. And I, I think we'll see a nerf one way or the other. Like I said, I feel like his base health will be the one that, that takes the hit. And he'll become more in line with, with uh, you know, it, 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 as, I, as I watch him now, it feels like his health is just underneath Udyr's in base. And that doesn't. It doesn't make sense to me as I as I watch the two characters in, in different areas, um, and I and I compare to Udyr because I play Udyr a lot, and and in this case it just doesn't doesn't feel right that he should have as much health as, as say Udyr does with as much damage as he can pump out. He does start with more health than Udyr, so he starts right with more that. health more health than Udyr. See that's I think so. Oh wait, you know what? Hold on, let me check. I can check it really quick. Uh... 426 for Darius, uh, 427 for Udyr. So it's like the same, yeah. And they scale a, a similar rate, too. They scale with magic resistance at the exact same rate. Um, Udyr goes up 6 more HP per level, but that's pretty ne negligible, I would say. And uh, the, But the thing is, if you count in Darius's... Um, if you count in all... Like, he does more dam damage than Udyr, so... It, oh, absolutely. You know, and that's what I'm saying. Like, like that's, that's, that's a problem. That to yeah. me, you know, as you said, assassin-like damage with Udyr-like tankiness. Okay, let's let's create a character that is, you know, just pumps out the damage, but can sit there and take a beating while pumping out the damage too. Yeah, I mean, and it's true. It's true damage on the alt too. And what a lot of people don't even know about Darius who don't play him is that he has a passive on the apprehend that also gives him twenty-five percent armor penetration, mm -hmm. which is just crazy. I mean, that much armor penetration without an armor penetration item is just it's not yeah. really. Every single one of his abilities and his passive and everything has some kind of double effect that makes it worse than one ability that most champions have. So, like you said, it's just a combination of all those things and the health, per, the the high health base and everything. So, it's you're, like you're it's, right. He's gonna get nerfed. It, it's like his abilities are giving him an automatic snowball. Yeah. It doesn't need a kill. He just needs to put the abilities together and it'll do it all its own. I, that's 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 kind of what what we're seeing here. I, I you know, and and here's my other point. Every time I watch Darius in a fight, it's like I'm watching. You know, okay, he is he is almost the biggest damage dealer on a team, so everybody focuses on him. But then, you know, the support's able to keep him alive for just that second longer, and you lose a team fight because you focused a guy who's got so much tankiness already. I mean that's that's the problem right there, and that's uh, I, you you know, like we've been talking about. I think he's going to get a hit, and I think he's going to deserve it. Wow, I like how this all went right back around the Darius. <laughs> it was a full circle <laughs> Darius want. podcast. Darius podcast. This is what everybody wanted to talk about. Yeah, he, you know, for one that 
for somebody who's only seen him in Dominion games, the rest of us only really watched him. It's funny how much we can talk about him. I was going to mention earlier that Merlo came out and what mirrored exactly what Bad Administrator said in that they're going they let champions sit for a while. So low elo because he said that ex- almost verbatim. We you know here's a list of champions. We haven't changed these guys because we mm. want the low elo players to learn how to play against them before we do I anything re- to them. I remember that post too. That's a good point. I forgot all about that. So, you know, Riot is very much aware of what all the champions are doing. They're doing a very good job of keeping track of you know, how much damage to do and who's playing what and how, like, the low ELO games. What are we considered low ELO? Below 1,200? Is uh, it generic, or are we talking, like, below 1,000? I, I'm, I don't know. Not the I don't want to answer that. <laughs> I don't want to answer that. I would say that uh, people with positioning issues or uh, anybody under, like, 14, 1300 is probably uh, not very good with positioning, I would say. You can get up to like 1600 just by being really good in positioning and, and not feeding your lane and playing enough games, obviously. You gotta play a lot of games. Right. You know, I, you know it, it's funny because ELO depends on you know the amount of games that you can play in total, but I will say that the, ge- ge- the, the generic feeding, because I, I, think, I think they have said that it below... Um, What's the numbers that are actually still above 1,200 of, of I think people once who played you go it. past 1,200, it, the percentages go way down. Like, I think the it, number of people that are up there. Most people are sitting between 800 and 1,200 ELO. Like okay. The majority of the people playing this game. That's what I thought. I thought it was that, you know, the majority is there. But I still, I, I agree with, with, with Badman that I think it's, my definition is more 1, 1,100 when I think about it. Um, that's when... You know the the you still see you know people still chasing singed when th- mm. it's obvious that you shouldn't be like like that kind of yeah. stupid stuff you still see like you don't see the um once you start I felt like once I got past twelve hundred it was more of um uh you stop seeing the stupid chasing you stop seeing the um oh my god I can kill somebody so I have to go for it type of attitude I don't think you stop um, seeing it I think you see less of it. <laughs> Because I definitely saw some yeah, of the that's games I played point. today where I watched Wukong chase a gangplank from the top tower to his bottom tower by his base and never get the kill. And while the yeah. meantime, something else could have happened. Yeah, that's yeah, a good point. I, I was more from when I was when you guys asked about low elo when we were talking about what happens to low elo players or players who are less skilled. I was more thinking of the type of players that can't co- come up with how to counter somebody or um, can't change the, their play style based on the other champions in the game or don't switch their items up or, you know, they build the same build every time. I mean, I see, I saw that up to a pretty high number, you know what I mean? But if you want to talk about just people who are just oblivious to everything that's going on, um, you know, I don't think that people at 900 ELO are making an effort to learn how to play. <laughs> They're just... So it's really hard to say, oh, well, when is 900 ELO going to learn to play against Darius? Because they're not really trying to. Um, they see Darius, and he gets a pan of kill, and then they decide that he's overpowered forever, and he forever will be, just like Trindamir. Um, it needs to be bought. <laughs> yeah, you buy him, and then somebody bans him, or you pick him. If you're at low ELO, one of the most infuriating things, if your ELO drops to a, to a certain level, is that... Um, certain champions just get auto picked by people who have no idea how to play them because they're overpowered. You know, so you if there's if uh, Trindamir is on the board or Cassidy is one that just it just blows my mind how people just pick him when they don't have any idea what they're doing and then they feed their lane and just rage out. You know, but Cassidy yeah. overpowered at low elo. That's what they say. So, right. yeah. um, and in my experience, Cassidy makes me somebody picking Cassidy on my team because he's on the board it makes me lose the game generally so it goes both ways but um yeah they're not, they're not going to learn see i think that people the people that morello is talking about I, I didn't hear that quote but i i'm just going to assume that you guys are right about that are the people in the range between like 1100 and 1500 that actually do eventually learn how to play against things people below that aren't really they're not really trying to i don't think they're really trying so i've played with people at that level and uh the mindset is more like deathmatch style than uh, let's how are we going to win the game kind of style. You know, they're kind of in it for themselves. And, um, you know, some people change eventually, but if but they then they'll go up. So it still doesn't change the fact that the people down at that ELO are just never going to learn to play against Darius, you know. Yeah, it's true. 
if they could, they would go up. That's the point. Like, I don't know how to put it anywhere better, anywhere better than that. You know, you start at 1200. Um, like you guys said, I think that Riot has actually said before that the average player is around 1050, but there's so many people in that range just below 1200 that it, it's really only like uh, 25% of people that are even above 1200, which is kind of crazy if you consider that it's the starting point. So, but that, that was, takes into account dodging and things like that too. To drop your elo. His actual quote here, um, it was like a three-parter, but I'm just gonna read the end of it. Is Darius hasn't actually shown to be OP in high-level games, but is pretty strong in lower-level games. Give him some time to get used to it, and I think people will understand how to fight him better, sort of like we do with Yi and Trindamir now. Yeah, I don't think that that's true at all. I think Trindamir and Yi still just absolutely destroy people at the lowest elos, and there's nothing you can do about that. So. Um, if people keep the thing is people stop complaining, right? Chinami and you stop being flavor of the month, and people stop playing them, and then people stop complaining. It's not because they changed them, right. or it's not because people learn to play against them. It's just because the pros you don't see the pros playing them, so you don't see the people who watch the pros playing them, and that's a good portion of people. So well, that's how bans work too. A lot of the bans I see are what pros are banning, and like yep. I'm still seeing Shaco being banned at uh, 1400 yeah, and I'm thinking there's I, another one. I don't really want to ban him because I have map awareness and as long as I'm not overextending <laughs> or something he's not going to be that big of a problem you know yeah and, yeah and I would rather ban you know someone someone else that could snowball harder than Shaco can but see then it then then you get the double edged sword because then if you're if you're down there uh, you may be map awareness but what about yeah. the rest of your teammates? I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. do, you, do you ban do you ban Shaco just to avoid stupidness from your own teammates? I mean, that's I that's, do. I I was about to say I do. <laughs> I, 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 I feel like I almost Scion. have to. I ban Scion at that Elo. If I'm below if I'm below thirteen hundred, I ban Shaco and I ban Scion and I ban Trindamir and I ban all kinds of Akali, all kinds of champs that I would never ban in a high Elo game. So once you just don't I, want other people playing or to get I don't, raped by. Yeah, because here's what ha- or LeBlanc, like here's what happens. If you're in mid lane in a low elo game, and people always say, this is what they say, I can't win at my elo because my team feeds. Yeah, right. And that is a true <laughs> statement because if you let the other team have Scion and he builds mobility boots and you completely massacre him in lane and he's got no, he's got hardly any CS and he's got hardly anything and he he just you know what he says? He says, screw it, this guy in the lane is too good. So uh, you see him go MIA, so you call the MIA, right? He and bot lane ignores you, and he runs down, and he gets a double kill. And it's like, okay, well, there goes your entire laning advantage, because you called the MIA and they didn't react. And now, Cyan has all of the gold that he would have gotten if he had farmed effectively the entire time. And the worst part is, if you're at a low enough elo, it'll just keep happening. He'll just keep <laughs> going bottom lane, and he'll get the double kill. And when he gets the double kill, they can get the dragon. And then once they get the double kill on the dragon, you know, they can invade your side, and it just it. It snowballs from there, you know, and the only the only saving grace is that uh, a lot of times at low elo people don't know how to actually finish the game out. So you you get a throw, you'll get lucky, and the other team will throw the game or whatever. Mm-hmm. But the point is, champions with high mobility or high burst damage, um, they just they just are inherently more powerful in games where the players don't have map awareness, don't listen to calls, don't pay attention to what other things are happening on the other part of the map. You know, um, just you know those types of things that people do to throw the game are just done so much more often it's pretty much at low elo you can win just by being overly aggressive all the time because you're going to catch people in mistakes if you just keep doing aggressive things that's the way i see it so i don't know basically uh yeah you need to ban things like you just said you wouldn't ban shaco i would ban shaco because shaco will just he'll just gank bottom over and over and over until he's got like 25 kills and then he'll go solo baron by himself well, there you go no yeah definitely listen people listening to this need to listen to bad administrators tips because uh as we've been trying to teach other people how to you know raise your elo a lot of this stuff right here that we've been talking about this entire night are going to help you quite a bit and i guess playing I've definitely seen playing super aggressive, going balls deep, diving towers, and actually knowing how to get out of there. Um, I'm not, I'm not ran hurt. I'm not going to say you should dive <laughs> a tower, but I, I've seen it work. And I've seen like a cat, for example. So many times I've seen cats um, being said she's awful, but when people don't know how to play against her, or the person knows how to play her very well, she becomes very effective. And that's where the, mm-hmm. you know you, you need the coordination to shut her down. But in solo queue, there's no coordination there because everyone's out for themselves. Yep, exactly. Tarek sees a guy, he sees Cat, and he sees another guy, and the other guy's in front, so Tarek just lands a stun automatically. He doesn't think about 
if Cat's going to alt five seconds from now or two seconds from now. Um, and, you know, if he, if he did think about stuff like that, he would be a higher level support. So you have to take advantage of things like that and wait on the outside. And, you know, it's just a, it's just different play style. Like, I play totally differently at low yellow than I do um, once I get over, like, 1,700. Even in, even in the 1,500s and 1600s, people say you, don't tell, you can't tell the difference with a couple hundred points. But that, that is a kind of a crock because you, you definitely can tell the difference between pretty much every 200 points you start noticing the differences in players. So, I was definitely going to say um, I've noticed the difference between 1200 and 1400. The, the players. Yeah. I'm not saying that, you know, amazing. They're not but pros, they have, they but it's a, a difference. More, they have a little more map awareness. They play a little yeah. more conservatively or a little more ballsy. Get definitely. And, and you know, people say to me, oh, well, yeah, but you'll fluctuate 200 points. And that's true, but... The average player at that ELO is going to be fluctuating down or up. And if you play enough games, you're going to get an average skill of actually 1,400 if you stay there long enough in your game. So you will notice that they are better than the people at a lower ELO. And, uh, you know, it's just... But all of that aside, the cha- the way they balance champions, it, it just has to balance for the whole game. So Morello is not going to leave it so Darius gets panic kills in every single low yellow game he just won't do it eventually he will nerf darius if it just keeps happening and i think darius is going to get nerfed for the same reason zinda there because nobody ever learned how to play against them so they had to just keep nerfing him and that's what they did and there you have it i agree uh, so that's all i can say yeah uh, we we've talked about it enough i just agree that's i think it's how it's gonna work well I don't want to. I don't want to wrap this up unless. Is, does anyone else have anything else to bring up today? Bad administrator, do you know when you're going to bring out your next video? Did you guys see my video from this week? Which one was it's this pretty, week's? It was pretty good. Uh, it's the one where I talked about beta and like. Yes, I watched that. I actually woke up. It was Sunday morning, Saturday morning. <laughs> I pulled it up <laughs> on my phone and laid in bed and listened to it. I was like, oh, all right. I don't know why people like that one. So that was that was pretty surprising. Honestly, I didn't think a lot of people it was going to be very popular because. Um, where I usually do something about cha- like a specific champion, everybody knows about the champions. Most people didn't play in the beta, didn't play even in the pre-season one, so that they don't even understand the things that I'm talking about in the song. But um, I would say after the Aurelia song, where, which is basically most popular because it has a it has a meme in it. I mean, that's basically it's better right. than Aurelia. <laughs> Automatically going to be the most popular song I ever made. But the second most popular song I ever made is this one. And uh, the message of the song is basically just play for fun and don't rage. So that's pretty cool. You know, I didn't expect it to go over that well. I thought your uh, gangplank that, song was way up there in popularity. Wasn't that one of your po- most popular songs for a while? I don't think so. No. no. I mean, people don't like the gangplank song. I don't even think it got a thousand likes yet, which. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I didn't know if you were going off of views or likes or what, how, how you were gauging. Um, well, the older songs have more views usually, except for, well, you guys made me make that Karma song, and that, it's like, if I looked ah. at a graph of all the of all the videos and the number of likes and views that they got, Karma is just like, it's like, every there's like a mid-range, and then there's like three videos above it, and then there's like Karma, like 50% people, <laughs> everyone else. <laughs> So uh, I was right. Nobody nobody likes Karma, but the people who, I think the people who liked Karma really did appreciate the Karma song, so... They should thank you, not me, for making that song. Because I would never would have done it, honestly. So does that mean we get to pick your next song now? Since we obviously give you really good songs everybody likes to listen you, to. We, we, you guys are going to pick Eve or something. something. That's the problem. No, no, no. I won't pick Eve. Uh, how about you do, like, Nautilus next time? Oh, man. I, yeah. I mean, the thing. here's the thing about... I know we don't want to get into, like, asking me questions. But I'm going to explain this because people don't get this. There you go. It's hard to do champions that don't have, um, like, real hum- like human personalities and, like, personality traits and, like, just generically evil sort of champions. Um, all I can really do is just say a whole bunch of stuff that's super generic, like I did with, uh, you know, well, a lot of champs I do that for. Just things that are violent sounding. Like, for instance, I get people request Nocturne all the time. Nocturne, Nocturne, Nocturne. Nocturne is just a floating black smoke that hits people. It doesn't have any anything to leverage. You know what I mean? Like, you can't you can't get yourself in the mindset of Nocturne and then say things that Nocturne would say because he's just a generic like evil specter guy. Like, he's evil ghost man. You know what I mean? So, um. 
it's just not interesting to me to try to write a, a rap from the perspective of Nocturne. I, I honestly don't know anything about Nautilus. I, he, I just have it in my head that he's the same way, but he's probably not. I'm sure he's got some Nautilus kind of... Nautilus is uh, a diver that got... I don't know if he got thrown overboard or pulled overboard, but then got taken down in the depths, and then he woke up, and he had his suit got turned into like this super suit of armor, and now he's evil, and yada yada. If you read his lore, that's pretty much all it is. Okay. Well, maybe I think about that then. I don't know. I, I haven't, I've only seen Nautilus in game like four times. I haven't really been playing very much lately um, because of work, but I'm mean, trying to get back into it again, and so we'll see what happens. We'll find you a good one. <laughs> well, people ask for Vladimir all the time, too. And I just, I can't write a song about Vladimir without making a whole bunch of vampires or sparkly references. You should do it. Dude, people would love you for it. Called I, mean, I wrote a Tarek song, but it was like, uh, it was, yeah, I don't know. It's one of those things. I'll send you guys the lyrics. It's just, <laughs> it's it's like uh, kind of making fun of how people view Tarek, you know, but I don't think people will get it. Like, I don't know. People will think that I'm like homophobic if I release it. Basically, is what I'm saying. But <laughs> <laughs> the thing about it is, is when you uh, when you uh, when you're like lampooning somebody's mindset like that, people will, uh, people don't understand the subtlety. So, like, I wrote the lyrics. They're very subtly like poke fun at people who make fun of how fabulous Tarek is, basically. But uh, I can't release it because then I'll just get accused of all kinds of stuff that isn't the case. You know, it's just uh, they don't get the. I don't get the point, I guess. That's fantastic. Uh, I can't wait to read those now. Yeah. We might tease we might have the tease. It's not that, that it's not that bad. Like here's the thing. Okay, let me explain to you. I'll just explain how the lyrics go, right? For the so the whole the whole chorus part is just about how much he likes gems, which is fine. I mean that's Tarek, right? And then the the verse is like, I'm gonna it'll be like I'm this is how I lean, I'm gonna stun you, and then we'll do our burst damage and then we'll back out. And then like in the middle of the verse, he's like uh he's like, Maybe we'll hit them all later, you know what I mean? <laughs> or or compliment your, your, like, he'll be like talking about how to win the team fight, and then he'll then he'll say, uh, you know, he uh, he really likes your shoes or something. <laughs> <laughs> that was basically how I wrote the song, and uh, and it's only got like four or five lines interspersed that are like, yeah, maybe later we'll hit the mall, or I, I like your hair. Where'd you get it done? You know. Like, stuff like that. <laughs> And I, was making, I was just pick, poking fun at the people who, who say that Tarek is gay, but that, they won't get that. They'll 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 think that I'm I'm a jerk. So I couldn't ever uh, release that song. I don't know. How. That's one of the ones have that I recorded completely and then just got rid of when have, I was done with it. Have you looked at the Tarek, the pink Tarek skin? I mean, he has fucking fluffy Uggs on. For God's yeah, sake. Yeah, because <laughs> but it's because he has fashion sense, man. <laughs> so that's the reason. Are you wearing Uggs to work? Am I wearing Uggs to work? You just said he has I, fashion sense, so I figured that you I don't have character. fashion sense. <laughs> I can pull off that. But Tarek, man, he can pull it off. Oh, my God. These fashion but anyways, shows. yeah, I did write a whole song about Tarek, and that's how it went. It was pretty, uh, fabulous? It was pretty fabulous song, yeah. <laughs> See, the, the pink Tarek skin, when you go back, like I'm looking at it right now, I have issues wondering whether that's a, a boy or a girl when you look at the drawing. Like, I hate it. it, it <laughs> It just the face is hard to tell with the hair. I I and, and those Uggs, yeah, I didn't notice that until now. Bad, wow, bad administrator, make me go back and look at skins. I didn't realize they had things. Yeah. On <laughs> oh, I knew yeah. I had you on the podcast for a reason, sir. Someday when I just want to take down my YouTube channel, I'll put that Tarek song up and people. Will... <laughs> <laughs> he's making fun of our our favorite champion but they won't they won't get it so but that's fine you know i the, i can't release every song i write because a lot of times people won't get it i got man the comments i just got on this song i can't believe you wrote a whole song just about bugs like that's not what the song was about it wasn't about first of all they're not even bugs like honestly the th the way the game was, was designed back then was just different they're not bugs but even so i only uh, I don't want to get all philosophical, but, but the whole point of talking about the old times in the song was to put people in that mindset where they were thinking about how they used to have fun and then deliver the message in the in the chorus about how we should play for fun instead of raging at people, right. you know? It's like a whole, I had a whole thought process behind it, and then people boil it down to, man, he really likes those old bugs. <laughs> like, it's like, what's the point, you know? Sometimes I wonder <laughs> what's the point. But right, it was like, right, I'm writing lyrics like with a whole, like, reason behind them and then man he really likes those bugs from back then 
This is what <laughs> happens when you're an artist. You know, Bat so. Moose Rider, just, he just loves it when the game's unbalanced. That's all he cares about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Which is true. All I want to do is make fun of gay people and love when the game's unbalanced. That's, that's my whole goal. Nice. So. Nice. Yep. Well done. You heard it here first. That's how, that's how I roll. That's what I do. Well, you know, I think we've had fun tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it has been a fabulous... Amazing gem night. Ugh, someone's going to